This is a video for how to go about creating a multi-view drawing for the arch shape in number five in activity 1.2.3 for your engineering class. For activity 1.2.3 in number five, you'll see they have an arch shape in the top right hand corner. And this right here is an isometric sketch of the object. We can see kind of a half iso circle here. And we can also see, you know, just a normal surface. Everything else is a normal surface except for this arch shape. This looks kind of like a bridge going across. And what we want is a multi-view drawing where we'll have the front view being flat, a two-dimensional shape, and that will align with a two-dimensional top view and will also align with a two-dimensional side view. So on our sheet of paper, um, in your notebook, you want to get to a multi-view uh, drawing sheet of paper where it has the 2D grid here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say that, you know, the width on either side, those like, kind of those small edges where that curve goes to are going to be two on either side. So I'm going to say the full width of the object is going to be eight. So I drew a line that was two. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And over here on the opposite side, we're going to go ahead and I want to sketch this line over here. And that's going to be kind of the start of our front view. Now if I go back to the object, we want to get the same height and we want to get the same width. Now note here that we're kind of making up our own dimensions. It would be kind of tough to see. You're currently looking at a Fusion 360 picture where you can see the grid settings on the back. I would rather just kind of for the sake of discussion say that you know our dimensions are whatever we make them to be as long as it's proportional and this is a symmetrical object so the sketch needs to be symmetrical as well. So we're going to say that the height is going to be 4. So I'm going to go on both sides and give myself a vertical line that's four. And then I'm going to say across the top up here, I'm going to close off our top view. Now, the other thing I have left to sketch is that isocircle shape. So I have this right here. This, this is an isocircle form because we're in an isometric, isometric view. For the arch I'm going to draw, I can just go back and sketch that in 2D. So that's the only thing we have left to sketch. So I'm going to kind of bring this back here. One thing I like to do is I like to say, you know, what's going to be the top point? of my semicircle, and I like to draw my semicircle off of that. So I'm going to do my best here to draw the best semicircle I can. You know, just a nice little half circle. And give myself, you know, I like to pick up my pencil when I sketch a, when I sketch an arch. You know, I tell students this is, you know, not an art class, it's a communication class. So we can definitely tell that that would be the front view of our arch shape. Now what we want to do next is we want to draw for ourselves some projected construction lines because we want to make sure that the top view of our object aligns with the front view. So what I like to do is I take my pencil and I'm going to faintly draw some construction lines up. And what that's going to allow me to do is make sure everything aligns whenever I go to create my multi-view drawings. So we're going to draw the top view up here and we're going to draw the side view over here. For now though, when we sketch our lines that project vertical up to the top view, I also want to say, you know, where are there any corners? Are there any hidden lines? Is there anything hidden? You know, where are some corners that I can't see? And I can't see this corner right here. So I'm going to project myself, you know, a nice faint line up here and a faint line on the opposite side. Those are the only four things that really I need to project a line off of up to my top view. For my side view, I want to project the horizontal lines over as being horizontal. So I'll project myself a line over this way, and on the bottom I'm going to project myself a line over this way. What I cannot see in the front view is I would not be able to see this little arch. So if we go back to our ISO, and I projected the two lines at these two corners right here, because I can't see this little corner down here, so I wanted to project those up to the top view. For my side view, I wanted to project a line off of here because I can't see that. You know, if I'm standing over here on the side looking this way, I can't see that little arch. So we're going to go back, and I want to project for myself a horizontal line off of that line. Nice. So. I went off just a little bit off there, but not too big of a deal. I went right off of my grid. I got a little bit too sloppy and too fast. That's okay, though. But just to give you an idea, we're trying to make sure we just project lines because this is going to help us complete our view here in a second. So one thing I also like to do when I create multi-view drawings is I like to leave a consistent gap between my views. So I'm going to go a two-block gap over. Just go one, two right here, and I just want to sketch up. I'm going a construction line here. Just a nice little sketch. Nice little construction line. I want to keep a two block gap. I also want to keep a two block gap between my front and my top view. So I'm just going to sketch for myself a little line over. Notice I'm going light and faint. These are not object lines. I did bold object lines for our front view. And I just want to keep these things apart. So we have to have the same depth 
and our top view is we have in our side view and depth is from the front to the back so this line right here and this line right here have to be the exact same depth same as this line down here we see we see height and we see depth in the side view we see width and we see depth in the top view so we need to make sure these are the same distances for the sake of discussion I'm gonna say that our depth is 4 so from this line right here we created this gap right here. This is going to be the front of the top view. I'm going to go back one, two, three, four. And I'm going to draw for myself a nice little construction line. Let that thing go all the way across. One, two, three, four. We have ourselves a gap there. Over here, I want to go four back. One, two, three, four. Because what I want, make sure I got this one, two, three, four. Because what I want to make sure of is that my depth in my top view is the same thing as the depth in my side view. And we have a four block depth gap right through here. And notice I can follow this up and turn the corner. And I'm right here at the back of the object. I can follow this over and come down. I'm over here at the back of my side view. So in creating my top view, I can tell that I can stand on the top here and there's no steps. There's no other surface that I can see. There's only one surface right here. There's no other real surfaces to draw. All I can see is this rectangular shape. So if we take a look at our front view here, this line right here represents the surface that's up here in the top view. So if I see this line right here in my front view, that represents this surface, and that surface goes the full width of the object. So our top view is going to start out with just one surface that goes the full width of the object, and it also goes the full depth of the object. So when I sketch this up here at the top, I can look and I can say, you know, how did you know that? Well, I can tell it goes back to the full depth because there's nothing that stops the surface. There's no like L shape here. There's not a slide. There's not a ledge. There's nothing else for it to really stop it. And I can see it going front to back. And I start asking myself, what can't I see in my top view? Well, I can't see this corner right here, and I can't really see this whole arch. I can't see that corner right there either. So what I would do is I would say I have hidden lines in my top view. Now, where can't I see a surface or an edge? It's right through here. I'd have this dashed line that is a hidden line on that side, and this is a symmetrical object, so I'd have it on the opposite side. Now, since this is an arch, an arch shape right here, I'm going to have a center line that goes down through the center of the object. So up here at the top, I'm going to go long dash, short dash, long dash. Now, if by chance this was just a square, it was not an arch shape, we would not need a center line right there. We would not. You could say that we could do center lines on symmetrical objects for an object such as this. It's pretty small and it doesn't have a ton of lines. We could say we don't really need it, but that is telling me that there is an arch shape or something with a radius or a diameter underneath that. Now we go back to our object. I'm going to come over to my side view and I can see there's only one surface on my side view. This vertical line in my front view represents the edge of this side view. So when I go back to my front view here, I want to make sure I line up my top and my bottom with the object. I could not draw like the side view up in here somewhere. Like I would not sketch that, you know, out in this area. I want to make sure all my views align. So if it's a horizontal line in my front view, it has to be a horizontal line in my side view. And the surface goes the full depth of the object. So that right there would be four. This right here would be four. Both those go the full depth of the object. Surface in the side view. If we can go back, this goes the full depth. This goes the full depth. This goes the full height. This goes the full height. We're going to go back draw on top of here. I'm going to draw on top of these two lines right here. We have ourselves the side view. Now asking ourselves again, what can't I see in my side view? Well, I can't see the top of this arch up here. I can't see it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw myself a hidden line right through here. Might want to try to erase this the best that I can. My eraser leaves things a little bit smudgy, um, but I'm just going to draw some hidden lines in here. And this right here is a hidden line that shows you how to complete that side view of the front view. Now since we put for ourselves a hidden line through here, um, we can't really say exactly where we would put a hidden line here. A, a, a hidden line, excuse me, a center line. A hidden line takes precedent over a center line. We can tell in our front and our side view, we can also put in something known as a center mark kind of through here to let people know, you know, that this is the center of that archway. In the side view, in this case, we would not place a center line. So that right there is a multi-view drawing. That is a multi-view drawing of number five. Now remember, they give you an isometric of number five, and they're asking you to go from an iso to a multi-view. And this right here is the multi-view drawing. So this has been a video for how to go about doing a multi-view drawing of number five from activity 1.2.3 for your engineering class.